Disclaimer, the material provided on this recording should be used for informational purposes only and in no way should be relied upon for financial advice. Also, note that such material is not updated regularly and some of the information may not therefore be current. Please be sure to consult your own financial advisor when making decisions regarding your financial management. Welcome to Talk To Me. I'm your host, Brenda Warren, The Solutionist. And I am so extremely happy to have one of my BCC alumni with me here today on the show, Talk To Me. I am so happy to have this conversation because it's a conversation I've been waiting to have you guys. As the solutionist, you know, I see things other people often miss. I help entrepreneurs, veterans, and authors turn their mess or their mission into a message. And today's message is coming from no other than DJ Ooch. He is a working uh, financial advisor that uh, works out of your stocks now. He helps working professionals overcome their lack of knowledge about stocks and Bitcoin by teaching them in simple to easy to understand lessons. Um, And, you know, that's going to be nice to know because I know nothing about Bitcoin. So I am looking forward to this conversation. He's the author of 10 Ways for You to Win the Stock Market, a book that makes being being in the financial market easy to understand. Uch has been featured in the New York Post, the Shortlist Dubai, and on BBC Radio Radio 1. DJ Uch, welcome to talk to me. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing amazing, Brenda. I appreciate the the lovely intro. And I just want to say hello and thank you to all of your listeners and viewers. I am a financial educator. So I want to shout out all my friends who are financial advisors, who are FINRA regulated. I'm not a financial advisor. However, I am a financial educator, which means that I can teach you about what's happening in the markets. It's what I do with my students all the time. I've been in the markets for quite a few years and I was just doing it on the side. And then I eventually got into it. It's what we call a pandemic pivot, Brenda. Uh, I got into the markets uh, in terms of educating because ultimately, you know, you're not able to take this information with you, right? So I wanted to help people by giving them the stuff that I know because I was doing really well in the markets. And when my friends saw how well I was doing, they said, teach me, teach me, I want to learn. And I started teaching my friends. They told their friends and now I'm teaching people I don't even know. And now we've launched yourstocksnow.com. And it's just been amazing to be a financial educator, to be teaching people about how the markets work. It's been phenomenal. You know, when I hear the term Bitcoin, sometimes I've had an aversion to that term because it seems that everybody's talking about this digital currency that's not regulated, that anybody is, you know, I understand that it's peer to peer and anybody anywhere in the world can trade these coins. And to me, that's a little bit scary, DJ. So tell me, why is this something I'd even want to do? So the beauty of digital money and just where we're at now. I mean, you remember being a little girl like I remember being a little boy. Did you have a debit card or was it all cash back then, Brenda? Oh, yeah, I'm dating myself. It's cash. (laughs) It's cash. Cash for me, too. I'm dating myself, too. Uh, So we were used to piggy banks and coins and and dollars. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you'd even slip some under the mattress just in case, right? Mm -hmm. We're in a different day and age now where digital money is the thing. You have debit cards being used. You have people, you know, using cards instead of using cash. Most Mm -hmm. people get paid in dollars and cents. They're not paid in cash. Mm -hmm. And that is where we're at. So leveraging that into Bitcoin and leveraging that into everything that you're seeing in the digital space has been an amazing Mm -hmm. thing to see because ultimately cryptocurrency is just another iteration of digital money being a thing. You're not using cash anymore. You're not using coins to pay your mortgage, to pay your bills, to pay any of these things. Some people do. However, most Mm -hmm. people do not. And in fact, 8%, 8%, only 8% of all the money that exists is actual money that you can touch. So mm. if you went to the bank and I went to the bank and all of your listeners and viewers went to the bank tomorrow and said, give us our money, the banks wouldn't have it because it's made wow. up zeros in a screen. And with Bitcoin, Ethereum, all the cryptocurrency space, it's basically leveraging the fact that digital money is the here, it's the now, it's the reason why people are sending money via Cash App, people are sending money via Venmo and PayPal. It's the reason why people are not stressed about carrying dollars and cents. A lot of the people that I know, they don't carry around legal tender anymore. They just bring a card with them mm-hmm. or they have their phone where they can pay you from their phone. So the fact that we have this new digital economy happening is the reason why I've seen cryptocurrency blow up so big. 
Now you have a lot of skeptics out there who are like, you know, I just want something that I'm able to touch though. You know, mm-hmm. like I want something I'd be able to hold on to. I completely understand that sentiment. The reason why most people trust their bank is because the United States government is FDIC insured all of the banks, right? So mm-hmm. if you put your money in your bank account, they've insured it up to $250,000 based on which bank and which credit union you're using, right? So you know that they're not just going to disappear with your money as long as it's there. The whole thing that we have with cryptocurrency ultimately is you've had a lot of people, unfortunately, enter the space who are either nefarious or don't know really a lot of what the space has to offer. And they get in through different mechanisms like MLMs and um, pyramids, unfortunately, and they, they leverage something that's something new and beautiful that is up for everyone. They leverage it in order to make some quick money. And they're pitching to people about, hey, join my group. We're going to be millionaires with Bitcoin overnight. Mm-hmm. And that's just not how it works. The way I teach my students, Brenda, is, you know, it's not a horse race. Right. So most people you think when you get into an investment, whether it's Bitcoin or whether it is stocks or whether it is, you know, whatever the case may be, that it's like this lotto ticket, that it's a horse race. All I have to do is pick the right horse and I'll be a winner. Mm -hmm. Not how I teach my students. I teach you that this is all gardening. Right. You're planting seeds, you're watering them and you're watching them grow. So I'll ask you, Brenda, do you like tomatoes? Yeah. Love tomatoes. Tomatoes don't love me, but I love them. (laughs) I love tomatoes myself. So as much as you and I love tomatoes, would you like to eat tomatoes every day for Mm. the rest of your life? And that's it? No. No, of course not. So you're not going to eat tomatoes three times a day, every day for the rest of your life, because that's ridiculous. That said, betting on one horse, right? Or saying or approaching it with that horse race mentality, like, well, I'm just going to choose this coin and that'll be it. I'm going to put all my money and all my energy into this. And that's that. It's literally doing the same thing. You're choosing to eat tomatoes three times a day forever. Where, in fact, what you can do is you can have some tomatoes in your garden, you can have some beets in your garden, you can have some Mm -hmm. carrots in your garden. So you're creating this beautiful garden so that ultimately, Brenda, what you end up having is having this great meal put together that's self-sustained, that you don't even have to go to the grocery store ever again to even eat because your garden is taking care of you in your backyard. That is my approach to investment. That's my approach to the stock market and with cryptocurrency. You pick out different coins based on certain data. So you're not just planting anything in your garden, right? You want to plant Mm -hmm. good seeds in your garden so you can get good fruits and vegetables. That's how I teach my students. And unfortunately, you have people in the space who say, hey, I got this horse here. You bet on this horse here. You're going to make a lot of money, see? Mm -hmm. And and those people, unfortunately, have turned people off to the space. I'm here, however, and I appreciate you having me on your show. I'm here Mm -hmm. to show you that there is a better, smarter, stronger way to do it. So tell me, for someone like me that I I call myself Bitcoin adverse uh, because of the people that have said, you know, it appears to be get rich quick schemes, you know, is there a lot of time involved? If I was to choose to say, you know what, DJ, I'm kind of feeling what you're talking about. So I want to check this Bitcoin out. Would I require a lot of time to do this? So it depends on how much time you want to put in. The way that I say in my book, actually, thank you for talking about my book earlier, 10 Ways for You to Win the Stock Market. I actually have it right here. All mm-hmm. right. That's a and good it's topic. A- it's a lesson for beginners as well. I was okay. inspired, inspired by my students to write this. The way that I talk about it in my book, if you can understand football, mm-hmm. do you understand football? Yes, I do. Okay. If you can understand Real Housewives, do you understand Real Housewives? Yes, I do. Then you can understand Bitcoin and the markets because it's just okay. something else to pay attention to. If mm-hmm. someone didn't understand football, maybe they came from part of the world where football NFL doesn't exist and you sat them in front of the TV, they would be lost. Mm -hmm. However, if they sat and watched ESPN for a couple of days, maybe even a week and hung out with you and me and others on a regular basis, we talk about different athletic teams and different regulations and different rules and how things work in a month, they would have a good idea of how things work. Right. Same thing with Real Housewives. If you put me in front of Real Housewives uh, right now, I've not watched in a long, long time. I'm not Mm going to know what's happening. I'm not going to know up from down. Like I know Candy because I know Candy from, you know, Mm -hmm. from her writing No Scrubs and from her and her a solo career and escape. Right. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, like I would be lost, like for the most part. Um, Whereas if I sat in front of it for a while and I watched, 
I would know everybody's business. I would know this one is with this one and this one hates this one and this one, this, that, that. I would know all of the different scenarios. And it's the same thing with Bitcoin. All it is is just about applying some time to it and it benefiting you in the long run in terms of you understanding it. Because I know this for a fact. I've taught students where from lesson one, lesson mm -hmm. one, I gave them a bit of homework and the homework that I gave them was not that deep. By the okay. time they came back for lesson two, it was like a different person. They had okay. all this knowledge and information and I teach you how to do your research. It's, it's fairly simple. I mean, really, you can do all the research online. It doesn't take a long time. So in terms of how much time you'd want to put in, you're a busy woman. I'm a busy man. It's like, I don't need another job here. It's not another job. It's just like watching football or paying attention to Real Housewives. It's not like you're putting that much time in. However, you're putting some time in. Now, I understand long term stocks because I do that. And I like the fact that I can just pick the stock I want after I've done my research and I set it and forget it. I don't check it again for a very yeah. long time. Can yeah. I do that with Bitcoin? You can do that with Bitcoin. That's the strategy that I teach in my, um, in my course. Okay. Uh, so there's a couple of different trading strategies that I, I teach. And you know what? I'll give a freebie to you and your audience here. One of them is called HODL. Mm -hmm. And HODL, H-O-D-L stands for, mm -hmm. now most people, they see HODL and they're like, what is that? Are you trying to say hold or like, what is it misspelled? Is that Dutch? Like what word is that? Hodel, <laughs> you know? And hodel for you and for your audience means, some of you may know this because you're already in Bitcoin. However, if you're not, hodel means hold on for dear life. Mm -hmm. So this is a term that if you Google it, if you search for it on Twitter, Brenda, you'll see hodel, hodel, hodel. And mm -hmm. hodel gang, you'll see that because mm -hmm. there are many people in cryptocurrency who believes just buy it, and just forget that you own it. Mm -hmm. You know, back in 2017, when I got in the space, it was the it was at the peak of the bull run. It was just about the peak of the bull run. And when I got involved, I was literally broke. I lived in L.A., broke on a couch, mm -hmm. I moved to Las Vegas from overseas. And I thought I had all, all this work laying there waiting for me. And it wasn't there. And I eight months of not working. That's why when we got to 2020, people were like, oh, my gosh. 2020 is like, I did this already. It's called 2017. So mm -hmm. I moved, I was overseas in Ibiza in Dubai for a number of years. I had a lot of my goals super fast living in Dubai. And I said, okay, I live in a five-star hotel in the desert playing music. Where else can I do this in the world? Las Vegas sounds about right. Mm -hmm. So then I went up and moved to Vegas. Didn't really know anyone. Didn't have any work waiting for me. When I moved to Ibiza, Brenda, I had work within a month. Ibiza is an island in Spain. Okay. Um, when I moved to Dubai, I had uh, a, a work in a month just from talking and networking. Mm -hmm. Eight months it took me in Las Vegas. Eight months. Because mm -hmm. in Las Vegas, they don't really care about the networking. They care about who do you know? Meaning like, who, who do you know already? Who's handholding you into this position? So because of that, I had a really horrible financial year in 2017. I was looking to put things together. I ran through my savings relatively fast, not expecting the long job loss. And by October of that year, I was like, I'm too old for this. How did I end up here? I've owned real estate before. I've owned stocks before. This is crazy. Why am I even working for anyone at this point in my life? And whatever happened with that Bitcoin thing? So okay. popped in my head. Now in 2015, two years prior, I had money. I was in New York City, I was doing great. Everything was great. And I was on Expedia.com. So you know on Expedia.com, you buy flights and hotels, yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I was on there buying a flight. And it said for the checkout, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Bitcoin. And I was like, Bitcoin, You can buy flights with Bitcoin? In 2015, April 2015, when I was on there to book my travel, Bitcoin was an option after American Express, MasterCard, and Visa. So I was like, what's Bitcoin? It just piqued my interest. Like, I never heard of this before. I Google it. It's $215. And I'm like, oh, okay. I started Googling it some more. I found Litecoin, which is silver to Bitcoin's gold. It was $2. Okay. And I was just like, oh, this is interesting. So after about an hour of just searching the web, I, I called up the... Wall Street friends of mine. I said, hey, so this Bitcoin thing, what do you know about it? And they said, oh, it's fake money. Don't worry about it. And I was like, okay. So I took their advice because they'd never been wrong before. And I moved along. Fast forward to me, broke, broke, broke mm -hmm. on this couch in LA. Like way broke. <laughs> way broke. Because <laughs> you look way broke. <laughs> way broke, right? Way broke. Mm -hmm. And 
I'm like, whatever happened to that Bitcoin thing? I look it up. It's $5,000. So I'm like, oh my gosh. So I don't know whether to laugh or to cry. Cry for the obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Or laugh because I knew it was something. Like, why would Expedia take it if it's fake money? It doesn't make any sense. Multi-billion dollar company. Like, it doesn't make any sense. So I call up my Wall Street friends. Hey, so, <laughs> you know, so I think about that Bitcoin, <laughs> you know, this thing's $5,000 now. And they're like, you know what? I wouldn't worry about it. And I said, I'm going to worry about it every day forever. How about that? Mm-hmm. And I just fell down the rabbit hole. And that's what got me into Bitcoin big. Um, I started to pick it up, broke on the couch and it saved my financial life. It put me on the right path in the right direction. And it crashed soon after. So that was October, 2017. A crash happened in January, 2018. And people, so did you ever see Back to the Future, the movie? Yes, I did. Okay, so I was like, Doc Brown, you gotta get this Bitcoin. It's the biggest thing ever. That was me and my friends and family mm-hmm. were like, you need to switch to decaf. So they were just not on board. And when it crashed, people were like, you doing that Bitcoin thing still? <laughs> And, you know, it didn't feel good because I had mm-hmm. bought Bitcoin at, at 18,000, 7,000, 8,000, and it was down to 5,000 and 4,000, mm-hmm. near 3,000. And I said, you know, I just knew in my gut, I was like, this thing, it's going to work. It's the new internet in terms of the technology, what blockchain is. And I yeah. said, you know what, I have this Bitcoin and whether it goes to zero or a million dollars, I'm never going to sell. And they said, all right. And Brenda, I literally forgot at times that I owned Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And thank God I did, because when it went to $65,000 a few months ago, I sold off much of my positions at Mm -hmm. the all-time high. I teach my students how to uh, recognize when to buy and when to sell. Mm -hmm. That's a huge part of this whole game. So I knew it was the time to sell. I posted about it at least a month prior. People thought Mm -hmm. I was crazy. They were like, Bitcoin's not going down, it's going to the moon. And you saw it go to 65,000 back down to when we're recording this now, it's 33,000. So Mm -hmm. I teach you how to identify. And I also am a big believer in HODL, just buying and just setting it and forget it because ultimately in my purview, Bitcoin has a long future. It's gonna go into the six figures with all the money printing you're seeing from central banks around the world. We're devaluing our currencies overnight, whether it be the dollar, the Euro, the pound, the peso, doesn't matter all currencies are being devalued because central banks have been printing so much money due to the pandemic, $4 trillion Mm -hmm. in America alone, which is why you're seeing housing be up right now, which is why you're seeing grocery prices up right now, which is why you're seeing precious metals up right now, which is why you're seeing Bitcoin and other things up right now. It's not that the value of them is getting greater. It's that the value of our currencies are going down and cryptocurrency is a great hedge against that. So I'm a big believer in Bitcoin in the future. So you can definitely buy it. Just say, yeah, I got some Bitcoin. And it's just in a wallet somewhere. And whether it goes to zero or a million dollars, I'm just never going to sell. It's just going to sit there. And you'll probably be taken care of as a result. So I know you have the book, which is for beginners, for people like me that have no idea, cryptocurrency, yep. Bitcoin, none of it. Yep. But you also have on your website, I saw there were lots of courses that I yep. saw there. How does all that play into it? Is it I buy the book first and then I take a course or should I take the course first and then buy the book? So, you know, different strokes for different folks. I have students who bought the book and the course. I have um, people who've just bought my book. I mean, there's friends of mine who picked up my book because they decided to get the Robin Hood app this year and buy GameStop stock or AMC stock. Okay. Like they just were like, oh, what's this stock market thing? I hear everybody's into it now. Let me take a look. And then because I'm a friend and they, they know I know what I'm talking about and they trust they said, oh, you know, I'm going to pick up your book on Amazon. It was a number one bestseller as well, which I'm super thankful for. So there's a lot of people who've picked up my book because they just want to learn. They don't know where to start or who to trust. And a lot of my students, generally, Brenda, they tend to be, um, you know, 30 to about 60, you know, work a good job, you know, kids possibly own their own home, 401k, IRA, like doing everything the right way. However, just want to build a bit more margin. You know, some have small kids and they're like, you know, college is coming up. It's like, I know I have um, savings for college. However, maybe I can be a bit more active and get more. They heard about Bitcoin years ago. Their uncle told them about it. They never got in. They've seen a lot of people make money in the last year during the pandemic trading stocks. And they're like, well, what about me? Because they, again, work a great job or work a good job. However, just want a little bit more. And I know that for me, what 
trading the markets has created is an incredible amount of liberty. Um, I always suggest to people, if you don't know anything about the markets, to take my course because I literally take five years of what I've learned and I put it into six hours of course material. I want to literally when I put it together. The reason why I even got into teaching this again, this is a pandemic pivot. I'm a DJ. 2020 happened and everything shut down, Brenda. It was a situation where I was like, oh, well, I did this already. I'm good because I had this trajectory of um, investing in Bitcoin, investing in the stock market. Um, and then I started to pick up precious metals heavy in 2020. So I knew I could kick my feet up for a while. Unfortunately, many in my industry of, of events and music, they didn't get the memo on investing. So they got stuck. I wasn't one of those people. I started to trade the markets full time during the pandemic because I was like, well, I got all this extra time. I'm not DJing. And uh, I had a great October. And I posted about it on Facebook just saying, yeah, great time to know the markets. And I had like a hundred, literally different comments and messages. I want to learn. I want to learn. I want to learn. I want to learn. I want to. And I was like, you couldn't pay me a year ago to believe that anyone would want to learn the markets, let alone learn from me. So I started teaching my friends on Zoom, kind of just one on one. And then they told their friends. And now I'm teaching people I don't even know. And we've launched yourstocksnow.com. So you can get a course there and and be able to take courses as well and do it on demand with a coaching call on Mondays, um, which is 12 months, by the way. So you get 12 months of me coaching you because my whole point in doing this, you know, I started off with an immense amount of value because I believe in giving value. When I got into this game, it was very much about um, people who, the people I would take courses from, it was all about me staying in their funnel. It wasn't about, giving me all the value up front. It was like, okay, I'm going to piecemeal this for you. I'm going to leave little crumbs. And then eventually you'll get to your point B. And for me, I was just like, you know what? I want to be someone who's going to give you everything that you need in order to win the end. And how can I do that in as fast a time as possible? So that's how I put the course together. And I'm super proud of that because, again, I have students who, by the end of the course, they're like rocking and rolling and they're doing really well. They're teaching their kids. They're teaching their family members. They're teaching, you know, they have more margin. So they're able to work less because they have found this new they have a garden. So they don't have to go to the grocery store as much as they used to do. So, um, you know, I feel that my book and my courses are an and not an or. Okay. Um, and that's essentially, you know, how it ends up. Well, that's just for me, like someone like me to say, okay, DJ, I'm listening to you. It sounds okay. Maybe mm -hmm. I can trust you, if not all these other people that have been coming at me. How much of an investment would I have to start out with? So I said this on many occasions. There's many people who are like, as soon as I have some money, then I'll get into the markets. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, you know, What's a good analogy for this? I'm usually pretty good with the analogies. You want to be, pre you want to be prepared, right? Mm -hmm. Like luck is opportunity meeting preparation, right? Okay. Um, so when you get the opportunity and you're not prepared, you're not as lucky, right? If you're prepared and you don't get the opportunity, you're not as lucky. However, when you have opportunity and preparation, that's when you get lucky. Can you imagine if I would have waited until 2020 to learn about the financial markets. Mm -hmm. I would have been destroyed financially if I did that. Mm -hmm. Destroyed. Because I relied as a DJ on the events industry to keep me solvent. And mm -hmm. when the events industry just went like that, not of any fault of my own, it became real. Like, what am I doing here? What are we going to do in order to keep the lights on? And, you know, I know that I'm in the position that I'm in because I got lucky in the sense that uh, the preparation was there for the last years and the opportunity came to not only uh, pivot, but to also help others. And it's benefited me financially. You know, I tell people I went from broke to a Benz. I was on a couch back in 2017, four years ago, and now I drive a CLA 250 Mercedes Benz. I'm living the American dream and I'm no different than you or any one of your listeners or viewers, I'm not a rocket scientist. I did not study this stuff in school. I basically just learned it and picked it up as I went along. And, um, you know, ultimately, I feel like I'm a great, 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 great representation of what's possible for you when you actually take some time to learn. Again, like, you know, there's people I know who know everything about football. And 
at the same time, they got like this in their bank account. So it's like, you know, what are you paying attention to? Um, paying attention to the markets for me has been extremely beneficial. And the best time to do anything is now. I tell students all the time and I tell others all the time, just like I'll tell you and your audience, Brenda, whether you have $5 or $5 million, the whole idea is getting involved because once you do that, you can make a return. So the whole point of money is for you, it's a return capital. It's in the Bible, you know, and the book of Matthew, there's the parable about um, the three servants, how the, the, the master gave the three servants money and then two of them got a return and one just put it in the ground, didn't make anything. And he's just like, what a bad servant you are, right? The whole idea of money is to get a return. So you can turn that $5 into $7. That way, your money's working for you rather than you having to work for your money. Same thing if you have $5 million, you turn the $5 million into $7 million. That way, your money's working for you rather than you having to work for your money. And if you want to continue to work for your money, you can. At the same time, though, have your money working for you. Again, you're planting a garden. Your money is seeds, and you're planting those seeds, and you're watering them, and you're watching them grow. So if I understand you correctly, my minimum fee seed is a five dollar increment if if that's what you choose you know there are stocks out there that are less than that so okay. the the idea is though get yourself educated i know that chapter one of my book mm -hmm. is get a mentor put that as the chapter one okay. of my book because for so long brenda um i was someone who i mean you and i met through bcc right so shout mm -hmm. out to chris and jen i was so long someone who was of the solopreneur mindset. And mm -hmm. if you want it done right, do it yourself mindset. And I can do everything, Superman put everything on my shoulders mindset. And you don't grow that way, right? Mm -hmm. There's only so much time that you have that God gives you on this planet. Um, and you want to make best use of your time. And a lot of that is leverage. So when you find someone who knows what they're talking about in this space, leverage their time, leverage their mm -hmm. expertise. Do you know how to drive a car? <laughs> yes, I know how to drive a car. Okay. Did you learn how to drive a car alone? No, I no, had a teacher. Didn't. There you go. You had a teacher in there to make sure you didn't crash, to make sure you turned properly and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. I am that person in the passenger seat for, for you, your viewers, your listeners, anyone who reads my books and takes my courses. I'm there. I walked so you can run. Like I took incredible losses looking to figure it out on my own. I eventually did. However, it took me years to do that. Why take years when you can take a month or two? That makes sense to me. We're going to put a pin in it right there for me, DJ. For those who do not know, BCC is the Be Connected Collective. It is run by Jen and Chris over there at Super Connector Media. It is an opportunity for uh, like-minded solo and entrepreneurs, mamapreneurs, and anyone who has a business or a desire to be totally connected to get connected with people like DJ and myself. It is something worth doing. Super Connector Media is making connections that last a lifetime. I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you, Jen and Chris, for the things you do every day to make people like DJ and myself to make our dreams come true. DJ, you know, I'm, I'm still like on the fence about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. But I think I'm going to read your book and get myself educated. I want you to tell me how has what you do teaching others about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, stocks, and writing your book help you live your best life now? Oh, well, I appreciate that. I appreciate you picking up my book, you know, 10 Ways for You to Win the Stock Market. It's super appreciative. I actually have a new book, 10 Ways for You to Win with Bitcoin, that's coming out very, very soon. So I appreciate you picking up my book. And uh, thank you for that. Um, I know that for me, uh, being of service is such a huge thing for me. You know, um, there's, you know, they say that when you help others with nothing expected in return, it's the best feeling in the world. And it, it really is you know, to be able to see the life change that happens when someone learns how the markets work, someone who was once concerned or scared because they didn't know anything and they were like, I don't want to lose my money or 
I don't want to do something stupid or, you know, my brother gave this a go. It didn't work for him. Or my dad used to do this and it didn't work for him. Or Mm -hmm. my mama always told me this, like that inner voice inside of you, that's telling you to step forward. You know, that same inner voice that told you to do BCC and to do BSA and to do the same modules you and I have done with Chris and Jen. It's that same voice that's telling you and your listeners and your viewers. Yeah. Give this a go. You see, you see that it can be financially viable. It's Mm -hmm. just, all of the limiting beliefs and fears. And also, you know, we have proof in the sense that when we fall, right, throughout life, it gives us the reason to not get up again, to say, you know what, I'm gonna just stay here instead. Because I don't, I don't like falling. (laughs) It hurts, right? Um, Whereas when you're a baby, right, a baby gets up, falls when it's learning to walk, gets right back up again you know, and when we're born, we're born success breeding machines because babies, little kids, they're fearless. They'll climb up, you know, kitchen cabinets to get to the cookies They're They'll show you a whole range of emotions within two minutes. They'll go from mad to sad, to happy, to fearful, to um, everything in the span of like two minutes, right? They're extremely expressive as well. So that is who I'm talking to. You know, I'm talking to, you know, the inner child in you, the inner child in your viewers and, you know, seeing people believe in themselves, take a chance on betting on themselves Mm -hmm. and then winning and succeeding. Hugely, hugely, hugely rich reward for me. Um, I know what my teachers did for me growing up and what my mentors did for me coming up. And to be able to give that back, because I'm in that stage of life where that is what I, I'm meant to be doing. I am an OG at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I love it. I love it. And I, I told till the day I'm no longer here. God forbid, you know, that's not tomorrow. I'd, I'd love to be here another 50 or 60 years. I can I will continue to help people. All right. Then I, thank you for coming on the show and telling us your thoughts about the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. If you'll stand by while I take this opportunity, like I do at this point in the show, to thank a veteran. And I'd like to ask you and the viewers that are watching to look at the website above my head. It is www.nevcc.org forward slash projects. That is where you go to join the basket brigade. That's an opportunity for you to write a word, a sentence, a paragraph, just give a veteran a thank you. There are 12 months in the year and each contains a writing prompt that will help you formulate your thoughts to tell a a veteran, thank you. It's never too late to tell someone thank you. Go to www.nevc.org forward slash projects. If you take the time out your busy schedule to do that, Lisa Deshorm, the executive director, of the New England Veterans Chamber of Commerce and her staff will compile all those thank yous at the end of the year, put them into a beautifully illustrated book and the lucky veterans on January 1st, 2022 will receive that book along with a gift basket full of goodies to say thank you. So take the time, thank a veteran. DJ, do you have any final thoughts for the audience before we end this broadcast today? Well, first off, I appreciate you, Brenda, for having me on. Definitely been an amazing experience to be able to talk with you about uh, Bitcoin, some of my story, the stock market and others. I just want to just let your audience know, you know, cryptocurrency is something that has so many different opportunities for you. You can definitely reach out to me. I'm on Instagram, instagram.com slash DJ Uch. So at DJ UCH, you can find me. I know that there are a lot of cowboys out there, so to speak. Um, there's people out there who are just talking a lot. And I know, you know, in your gut that something's not adding up. And you're right. However, the thing that's not adding up is not the thing they're talking about. It's the person who's delivering the message, right? So they say, don't shoot the messenger. In this case, shoot the messenger. They're not good people, (laughs) right? And, you know, some of them are, their heart is in the right place. They just don't realize that they're being led astray, right? So I have a whole module called Scam City in lesson one of my course. And I literally detail all the different scams because I've been scammed in cryptocurrency. When I got in, I was wide eyed and I wanted to, it's all these shiny objects and I wanted to get involved. So I understand the, uh, the idea that maybe it's like, you know, I don't know about all this right here. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is, is that the technology blockchain, in addition to what it does for the monetary side of fintech and DeFi and, and so on and so forth, it is monumental shifts that are happening right now. 
when you look at NFTs, which are non-fungible tokens, these are all, I know there's a lot of concepts and, mm-hmm. and terms. Google whatever you're not understanding me say, because believe me, there's a whole universe out there of opportunity for you. Mm-hmm. And what better time than now to get involved, learn about it, find out where you fit in. So just get in where you fit in. And that could be you just picking up a little Bitcoin and putting it into a wallet and forgetting about it. It could be you... Um, starting a cryptocurrency for your business, right? Doesn't take a lot. You can start a cryptocurrency in an hour. It doesn't take a lot. Most people think that I had a student on earlier. She was like, really that quick? I said, yeah, you can start a cryptocurrency very fast. I just went to a, a dinner, like a mastermind dinner, and they were launching a cryptocurrency for their business. So that could be hugely beneficial for you. Um, just understand that if you're an artist, also, you're able to sell your digital arts online as NFTs, non-fungible tokens, and make triple, if not 10 times what you were making before. Like we are on the edge, we're on the precipice of a huge, huge transformational shift that's not necessarily going to be a, an A and B lights out kind of thing. It's going to happen over time. However, it's happening and the, the plates are moving and you want to be on the right side of that equation when it does, because there's three types of people, right? There's people who um, watch what happened. There's people who make it happen. And there's people who ask, hey, what happened? And you don't want to be <laughs> that last person. You know what I mean? You want to make it happen. So get your get in, you know, come holla at me, DM me on Instagram. I'm free to answer your questions. Like I'm more than happy to do that. And uh, because I, again, I believe in the space. I believe in you getting your advancement. And I also know that there's a ton of scammers in the space. So as someone who, you know, by the grace of God, is someone who is God fearing and wants to put everybody on the right path. I'm here to help you. Thank you, DJ, once again, for joining me here on Talk To You. Talk to me. I can't even figure out what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> In any event, ladies and gentlemen, that's what we got for you today on Bitcoin. I hope you were enlightened. And if you'd like to get in touch with DJ, we're going to be sure to put all his information below him on the screen and in the description. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, the choices you make today will be the reality you live tomorrow. Choose wisely. Be blessed. <laughs> Thanks again, DJ. You're very welcome. Thank you.